just starting the YouTube. Okay, it should be fine. All right, uh, uh, hi and welcome everybody uh, to this first, uh, uh, you know, the first lecture in the series of Ramanujan Explained. So I just wanted to uh, show you uh, what uh, uh, okay, I just wanted to show you uh, what uh, uh, just just share with you before beginning on what I plan to do in the series of lectures. So uh, the main the main objective is to go through various works of Ramanujan. The key references are these books. Uh, you can see uh, here is Ramanujan's notebooks. There are five such volumes, and this one has five hundred pages. And then there are five more volumes of this kind, which is Ramanujan's lost notebook. Another five. Uh, this is close to four hundred. Uh, some pages. This is for 30 pages. And this one is a special copy because I don't know if you can see. Uh, can you see if you can see my screen? If you can see my video, it's it's an autograph copy by the author. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, you know, read through these books and explain various identities. Uh, as well as I could understand them, and uh, 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 and uh, you know it should be at a level which is let's say of math which you can cover in uh, in an undergrad. So uh, if there is something which is not usually covered in undergrad, I might uh, I might uh, uh, repeat it here for you. So just uh, be patient about that. And uh, otherwise, uh, if, if you feel that there's something which you want to learn something in background, I'll include it. So you can you can ask me to go back. So uh, these are the Rogers Rams and identities for six volumes. This is the objective of our session today. And today's session should give you an idea of how, what all are the kind of things that we would do. It's kind of like a sample lecture. But we'll get serious from next time and do more and more identities. So these are two identities. Uh, there's a parameter Q. So you see one Q, Q raised per four, Q raised per nine. So that pattern is easy. On the left, there's a sum. You're dividing by one minus Q and then one minus Q, one minus Q square, and so on. So there's a pattern here. On the right hand side, there are infinite products. So one over one minus Q, one minus Q raised per six. 1 minus 2 is by 11, 16. Again, pattern is easy. It's 1, 6, 11, 16. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> every fifth number here. And then 4, 9, 14. So, again, every fifth number. Uh, so, it's a 4 uh, or uh, 1 mod 5, both these numbers in the denominator. And you get all of them. And similarly, here, there is a similar kind of pattern. On the right, it's easier to see. It's 2, 5, 2, 7, 12. So it's uh, 2 and 3 mod 5. On the left, it's uh, n uh, k square plus k. So again, the denominators, you have 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared. And so, so speaking about these, Hardy said, it would be difficult to find more beautiful formulae than the Rogers Ramanujan identity. So this is, these have a long history. Uh, first of all, Ramanujan sent them in a a letter to Hardy, and then for a while nobody could prove them. And then they found that they had been proved by Rogers 20 years ago. And then several proofs followed, and now there are hundreds of proofs, uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, we won't get into. But uh, today's objective is how one could discover such identities. So first of all, how what what you make sense of these identities? So, uh, I'll be writing on the screen, so please tell me if you, uh, if you don't, if there's something not clear. Okay, so uh, so how do you make sense of such identity? So you have things like this. So you 
have k going from 0 to infinity, q raised per k square, 1 minus q, 1 minus q raised per k. This is on one side, and on the product side, you have k going from 0 to infinity, 1 over 1 minus q raised per 5k plus 1, and 1 minus q raised per 5k plus 4. Right, so uh, so how does one make sense of something like this? There are, so how do we make sense of this? How do we make sense of this? So there are two ways essentially. One way is to look at them as formal power series in Q. And the other way is uh, as analytic identity. So both are both are useful. We will cover both of them. But uh, uh, so this is uh, this is more algebraic. So this could be method one, and this is method two. So this is the one which we will focus on today. Both are useful, um, <clears throat> and we'll get to as analytic identities at some point. But today let's just look at formal power. So what are formal power series? So if you just uh, so this is a symbol. For formal power series, this is the complex numbers. Uh, these are defined to be the set of all series of this kind. So where a k belongs to complex numbers, and q is like x. I mean, these are like infinite power series. This is series, the formal, and you can define a plus on them. So, so first of all, uh, a k q raised per k is equal to B k q raised per k if and only if a k is equal to b for all k. So coefficient wise they should match then they are okay. Uh, you can define a plus here. So you can say a k q raised per k plus b k q raised per k is uh, defined to be a k plus b k q raised per k. So again, k is going from zero to infinity. K is going from zero to infinity. K is going to infinity. Um, so usual properties of sums hold. So it's a uh, it's uh, associative, it's commutative, etc. There's a zero, and there are additive inverse. So zero is just zero plus zero plus zero plus q plus zero q plus zero times q square, etc. Uh, you can multiply two of them. So before multiplying the we can multiply. So let's say so a k q raised per k times b k q raised per k is defined to be c k q raised per k, k going from zero to infinity, again zero to infinity. And what is CK? CK is AK B0 plus AK minus 1 B1. So A0 B2. So this is the familiar Foshi product. And again, we can have associative laws and commutative. Uh, there's a unity. So here there is a 1. And, uh, there's, there's some kind of a ring structure. Um, third thing is that you can um, you can have a scalar multiplication. So this is defined to be C times A K. So this is scalar multiplication. So what one is saying is that this is kind this is a vector space plus a ring. And uh, it's usually called an algorithm. So, um, what about uh, uh, what about uh, 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 you know invertible elements? So, there are some invertible elements. So, 
So you can do inverses. So you can do inverses of some elements. So the key idea is, so first let us consider we recognize we use the uh, so uh, so for inverses we use this idea we use geometric sums. Uh, so what are geometric sums? So one minus two raised to minus one is usually written like this, and we can write it as one plus two plus two. So this can be proved uh, using this will be proved very easily in formal power series. So this is a formal power series proof. Uh, if you multiply these two guys. Do you get one plus zero Q plus zero Q square plus one? So just <clears throat> just on the left hand side, you can just say what is the coefficient of Q raised for zero, the constant term, and uh, it's uh, it's one times one, so it's one times one, which is equal to one. So this matches. This guy matches. Uh, then coefficient of Q. So you have this term Q multiplying with this one, so it's minus one, and this Q multiplying with this one, so you get zero. And similarly, Q raised plus square, the coefficient is. So, so what what are you doing? You're doing Q square to get Q square. You multiply this by this, and you multiply this by this. So once again, it's minus one plus one, which is zero, and so on. So you can see that the coefficient of Q or S per n is zero, and this matches on both sides. So this matches the all match the right hand side. So that finishes this proof. So just a simple, uh, uh, let's say, telescoping argument. But this is this sort of indicates what you want does in in formal power series. What one does is we compare coefficients. That's it. If if some calculation is finite coefficient wise, then it's fine. Now let's let's say in general. Suppose I have a f. Uh, Q such that uh, F0 is not 0. That means FQ, so it's 1 over uh, FQ uh, is 1 over A0 plus A1Q plus so on. And A0 is not 0. If that happens, then I could take out the A0 here and I'll get uh, 1 over 1 plus uh, uh, well, one minus, uh, I'll do two minuses, so minus, minus three. Minus A1 over A0 and uh, uh, minus Q maybe. So I'm taking this common, and then I have a minus Q over, uh, and there's a A0 here, so you get a uh, over A0 here. And then you have A1, A1 plus A2Q plus so on. And this, uh, you can write it using the geometric sum formally as this one plus this guy q minus q over a0 a1 plus a2 q plus one plus minus q over a0 square a1 plus a2 q plus square. right so i'm fine and again in principle you can calculate coefficients of q here is just one guy, then coefficient of Q squared comes from this plus one of these guys and so on. So every calculation to calculate coefficients 
of Q raised per n is quite easy, uh, is doable, is and a finite process for any n. So, so you can divide. Uh, so f of q inverse exists in form of power c, provided f of zero is not zero. Otherwise, you take out the q and you know maybe you get some lower density or something like that. Okay, so uh, so so this is how one has to interpret. Uh, coming back to Okay, so coming okay. yeah, coming back to the Rogers Ramanujan identities, we had q raised per k square, one minus q, one minus q square up to one minus q raised per k. So if you look at each term for every k, there's a q k square, and then this guy one over one minus q, you can write as one plus q plus q square, and so on. Then 1 over 1 minus q square, you can write as 1 plus q square plus q raised per 4 plus so on and so on for every guy. 1 plus q raised per k plus q raised per 2k plus. You can see that in principle, you can calculate. So in principle, you can calculate q raised per m for any n. And similarly, this product over here, uh, that's much easier. So this product, 1 minus q raised per 5k plus 1, 1 minus q raised per 5k plus 4. Again, each of these guys, you can you can write as 1 plus q raised per whatever. So this is you know, 1 over 1 minus q. 1 minus q is k is 0 k is um, times 1 minus q is part 4 um, this one. And each of these guys you can write as 1 plus q plus q squared plus double one. So again, both sides, both sides can be interpreted. As formal power series. And uh, uh, what we do is, uh, uh, what I'll do, uh, what I'll suggest we all do is we will use Sage. So to do, so it's available at sagemap.org and you can download it or you can use it online but downloading is possibly better easier uh, to work uh, provided you have a mac or a, uh, you know but if, if you have a windows machine it's a little bit cumbersome to install it uh, but you can use it online and uh, what i'll do is i will give some exercises i'll give some exercises uh, to get started in sage and a lot of uh, formal power series calculations. So we can do some of them by hand, but formal power series calculations can be done on Sage. So we can compare uh, various, uh, uh, we can compare uh, the powers uh, using Sage so, so that we get a sense of what these identities are doing. So again, there are lots and lots and lots of identities so uh, it uh, it's helpful to do a few calculations by hand, but largely we'll be doing we'll be doing the same. Okay, so uh, so that's how one can interpret the uh, the thing and uh, uh, the the Rogers Ramanujan identities. I'm just picking on one guy right now, but what what uh, how how the topic is how did Ramanujan discover these identities? So for that we need this. We need to do a simpler uh, discover. A simpler. We need to consider a simpler thing. We, we consider a continued fraction. So this, 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 the simplest continued fraction.
this I hope many people have seen. So this uh, this guy. So what's the continued fraction? I mean, it's like a fraction which keeps going on and on. And the way uh, the way one studies it is we chop it off. So, so we chop off at various places. So at so chop off at one, we get one. Then we get one plus one over one. Chop off here, and we get two. Then we get one more. So now you notice this part is already calculated. Right, so we have one plus one over two, so that's three by two. Then one more. Again, this part is one plus one over one. Uh, sorry, one over one plus one. This part is already calculated. One plus one over one over one plus one. This part is one plus one over three by two, which is one plus two by three, which is five by three. And so on. So, so well, uh, this suggests how how one can do it. So suppose this is suppose we chop it off uh, at w n, then w n is one over one plus w n minus one. So at the nth place we do this. And uh, the other thing that you notice is that uh, these numbers uh, keep coming. Uh, so this number right here. This number comes in the denominator. This number comes in the denominator here. And if you keep uh, if you keep taking numbers, you'll see that each numerator comes in the next denominator. So what we do is we substitute w n equal to some new number f n over f n minus one, and then this guy gives f n over f n minus one equal to one plus one over f n minus one over fn minus 2, which implies that fn equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So it gives a recurrence relation. So this is called a three-term recurrence relation. So this is very familiar. I, I don't know. So, so we begin, let's say f0 is 1, f1 is 1, then the next guy is 2, then some of previous two guys, five, then eight, then 13, 21. So, does anybody recognize this? So these are, these are what are called the Fibonacci numbers. So feel, feel free to you want to interact. Okay, so uh, so brilliant. So we figured out a formula for this recurrence relation uh, for this uh, continued fraction, and we can see it's f n over f n minus one. We can calculate it like this. This is much easier to implement in a computer to calculate, and we can get uh, an idea about what this function is. So what did Ramanujan? What did Ramanujan? Okay, so this is this is a very you know very simple continued fraction, and what Ramanujan did was as follows: so he generalized one over one plus one over one plus so on to one over q plus one plus q square one plus q cubed one plus q four and so on. So he just added some cues, and let me say this is very. This is also something which is very natural. So uh, the, these are called Q analogs, and they're very natural things to do. So the simplest Q analog, perhaps I should mention, simplest Q analog is one plus one plus one is n. This is one minus q raised per n over n. This is the geometric sum, right? So this is very well known. 
Right. So, um, so well, uh, uh, let's calculate this. So let's uh, let's call this. Uh, I don't know something. Well, we just calculate it. So, uh, so chop it off. So you get one. Then you get one plus q. Then you get one plus q over one plus q square. Right. So you get something. Uh, one plus q plus q square over one plus q square. Then you do one plus q over one plus uh, q square over one plus q cube. So we would like we would like to use this chap right here and uh, use it here, but things are not matching up right. So there's an extra power of q here and from here, right? So what we did in the previous case, we were trying to uh, we were trying to use the previous guy, right, in, in the Fibonacci case. So uh, here it's not possible. So what, what we can do is we can start with something slightly more general. So let's call it CZ. And instead of this, I just add a particular Z over here. So I add an extra guy, extra parameter, one plus one. And now, uh, now C of Z is equal to one plus Q over C of Z Q. So, so our original guy, which Ramanujan would have just added the Qs, and then you just add a Z there uh, because we want to use this same trick which we used in uh, for the Fibonacci number, right? So, so this is quite natural to do so. And again, some more experimentation. So some further experimentation. Very similar to the previous case. So some more experimentation. Suggests that let me substitute H of C over uh, H of Z. So instead of f, we have z and some slight uh, this thing. And if we substitute it in this guy right here, we'll get h of z over h of z cube equal to 1 plus q times h of z. So this is z q square over h of z. Q. And this means that h of z is equal to h of z q plus q times h of z q. Right, so, so this is the, the more linear form. Um, again, we want an expression for h, so we assume now. So here is an inspired choice, and this is also something we do in math all the time. We assume that the solution is some kind of power series. So assume that h of z is summation uh, of this form, a k z is per k. So formal power series still in Z now. Assume this and plug it in here. So what do we get? We get summation a k z raised for k, k going from zero to infinity. Replace z by z q. So it's a k q raised for k z raised for k, k going from zero to infinity plus q times um, um, Z Q square. So there was something wrong here. Did I forget a Z? Yeah, there's a Q Z here. Sorry, this Z I forgot. So there's a Q Z, and then Z Q square. So it's Q Z. Then here you get uh, A K Q raised for two K Z raised for K, K going from zero to Right, and uh, now we compare uh, coefficients of uh, z raised for k. So compare coefficients. Of z raised for k, and we get a k is equal to a k q raised for k, 
So, uh, so here there is an extra z. So it's z k plus one. So you will get a a k minus one, and there's a q here. So it's two two k minus two, and plus one here. Right, and this will mean that uh, right. So this is two k minus one. So this implies that a k one minus q raised per k uh, equals a k minus one q raised per two k minus one. So very good. Let's go on to the next page. So this guy I can see right here. Let's just rewrite it. Oh, here it is. Yes. Okay, so uh, so a k is equal to uh, a k minus one q raised per two k minus one over one minus q raised per k. We can iterate this, so it's a k minus two. Q raised per two k minus one plus two k minus uh, so one less k minus one one minus q raised per k one minus q raised per k minus one and you keep doing this till you reach a zero and uh, you get one plus three plus five up to two k minus one and here you get one minus q one minus q square one minus q raised per um, k. So just notice that you know it's k minus one here, so it's k here. So it's a zero, so you get one minus q over here, and uh, uh, the connection here k and two k minus one. So when q is k is one, you will get two times one minus one, which is one, right? And this uh, this is uh, this is you to see that the sum of the odd numbers is k squared. So brilliant, what we get, what we get is, um, let me just write it on this side. What we got was H of C. So we got H of C. Uh, this A zero, Q raised per K square, and one minus Q, one minus Q raised per K. So we can take uh, uh, Z raised per K. And uh, what we had was, uh, so we can take, first of all, let's take. I mean, looking at the original, uh, the first, the first, uh, uh, continued fraction, uh, but uh, this anyway will cancel. But what we were really interested in was H of, so our CZ, what was our CZ? This was H of Z over H of Z. So what it is is K equal to zero to infinity, Q is for K square, uh, Q is for K, or rather the original one, let me write the original one. Originally, we didn't have a Z. So originally, we had C of 1, when Z is 1. And this would be H of 1 over H of Q. So H of Z, Q with Z, with, uh, Z equal to 1. And this, is, this will give you uh, the sum, K going from 0 to infinity, Q raised per K square. 1 minus q of the 1 minus q raised per k divided by q. So z is q, so q square k square plus k, 1 minus q. So this is the, this is the sum side. This is the sum side of the denominator 1. 
and this is the sun side of so there they are. So this is how we discover. How we discover. I mean, this is very natural, I and mean, it could have been done by Ramanujan. Uh, and it's very natural. And uh, let me uh, go back and say that. Okay, we just start with this continued fraction, the simplest one. Then add a Q. We need to add a Z. Once we add a Z, we think. Can we get a power series solution? And if we can get a power series solution, that's what we get. We get a ratio of two power series. Right. So, so okay. I mean, this is this is not so tough. And let me just mention that this is the work of uh, Dick Askey, who showed who so Askey suggested around the end that we got it this. The sum side. Now, what about the product side? So that's another trick. Let me just go into the product. So let's see how to discover the product side. See how am I doing the sign? Oh, doing okay. Um, so, uh, so here, here is the thing. Uh, so here is the trick. So, what's the trick? So, recall the proof of geometric sum. This was the simplest Q analog. So, let's say S is 1 plus Q plus Q square up till Q raised power n, n minus 1. So, if I multiply uh, uh, by 1 minus Q, then I'll get. 1 minus q plus q times 1 minus q plus so on up till q raised per n minus 1, 1 minus q. So this 1 minus q plus q, uh, and then uh, there are higher powers of q. So this is the critical one. This is the critical one. Uh, and uh, this gets cancelled, so you get 1 plus higher power. Right. So, uh, so, so the moral is, the moral of this trick is uh, that uh, if you have uh, S equal to 1 plus Q plus higher power, then multiply by 1 minus Q and you'll get 1 plus higher powers. Very simple observation. Right. So, let, let's apply it here. So let, let's just apply it on this guy. So we consider H of 1, which is 1 plus Q raised to power 1 minus Q plus Q 4 raised to power 1 minus Q 1 minus Q square plus Q raised to power 9, right? plus whatever. So this is of the form. So if I expand 1 over 1 minus Q as a power series, I will get 1 plus Q plus higher powers, right? So I get 1 plus Q plus higher powers. So I multiply both sides by 1 minus Q. So what do I get? I get 1 plus Q, uh, right? So I get, sorry, 1 plus 1 times 1 minus q plus q here plus I'll get q raised to 4 over 1 minus q square plus blah 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 and this guy will give me 1 this q will cancel and I'll get 1 plus q raised to 4 uh, 1 minus q square plus so, so the next one I multiply is so this is 1 plus q raised to 4 plus higher power So consider 1 minus q, 1 minus q raised to 4, and I'll get 1 minus q raised to 4 plus, so here, 
uh, I'll get uh, Q raised to the power 4. So 1 minus Q raised to the power 4, I'll multiply, I'll get 1 plus Q square. And here I will get uh, the third term is Q raised to the power 9 over 1 minus Q. I had already cancelled 1 plus Q square, and there's a 1 minus Q cubed plus whatever. So again, this is uh, 1 plus Q raised to the 6 plus higher power. So next term I'll multiply is, what should I multiply by? I should multiply by one minus Q raised to power six. And if I keep doing it infinitely, I can hope that, we can hope that, let's say, can hope that. So this, that I get one. <laughs> so, um, so brilliant. So uh, this is, uh, if you keep doing this, uh, if you do this uh, calculation uh, a lot, you will get H1 times one minus Q, one minus Q to the four, one minus Q to the six. And if you keep going on, you will get uh, one minus uh, Q to the uh, nine, then 11, so these uh, these uh, terms, the powers are uh, one and four mod five. That means remainders uh, of these powers are one and four when you divide by five. So we can hope that H one is equal to one over this time. So uh, somebody like Ramanujan would have calculated like hundreds of terms. To, to make a guess and be almost certain that this is true. And this, this is actually a trick due to Euler. The trick due to Euler. Uh, and uh, sure, I mean, surely it's an easy trick. Uh, Euler did it, and I'm sure probably you have discovered it himself. So this gives the product size. Of Rogers round one. And as an exercise, you work out the details of the product side of RR2. And in fact, uh, what I would like you to try is to, to do the same trick on this series. So, S, uh, let's assume S is some number right now. But uh, this is a zeta function, so you can do it. So if you if you do the same trick, do same trick to discover Euler's uh, product formula for the zeta function. So, um, uh, yeah, so uh, great. Um, we almost, uh, uh, we figured out how exactly uh, Ramanujan could potentially have discovered uh, the Rogers Ramanujan identities. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, uh, show you what uh, some notation, so, so some notation which will be useful later on. Uh, what we will uh, uh, this is a note, this is called Q rising factorial. So when you open Ramanujan's notebooks, you see a lot of this notation. So this so we will need to at some point learn this. So uh, so this is equal to one if n is zero. Uh, otherwise, it is one minus a one minus a q one minus a q to the n minus one, so n terms for n bigger than zero. Uh, and uh, we also see uh, n equal to infinity case, in which case one minus a q to the k, k going from zero to infinity. So as an analytical object, so as formal power series, no problem. As an analytical object, which we will need, we need this for convergence. 
so you usually convert uh, you know infinite products are not covered in undergrad so i we will cover at some point so pending agenda we will cover infinite products so that you become familiar with these so in this uh, terminology uh, rogers ramanujan one you will see as this q q k k going from zero to infinity is equal to uh, 1 over q q raised to the 5 infinity and q raised to the 4 q raised to the 5 and as analytical identities you need q less than 1 and rogers ramanujan 2 you will see like this so if you google uh, Rogers Ramanujan identities, you will see something like this. So, I mean, just mentally go through this. This is uh, 1 minus q, 1 minus q raised per 6, 1 minus q raised per uh, uh, 11, and so on. And this is 1 minus q raised per 4, 1 minus q raised per 9, and so on. And uh, so each time the when, when this q is replaced by q raised per 5, so the power of q changes, right? And this was uh, already there. Um, so let me uh, let me conclude uh, uh, quickly by saying that uh, uh, what are our goals of these lecture series? And the goals may change slightly depending on, you know, uh, requests from people who, are, uh, who want to listen to these. Uh, so number one is to uh, reorganize to some extent uh, the uh, the work of uh, the I, the uh, notebooks of Ramanu. Uh, by so this is the primary references are burned. Uh, Ramanujan's notebooks and Andrews plus point. This is a large task. Uh, so this is Ramanujan's notebooks and the lost notebook. So let me say that uh, uh, Ramanujan had some published work later, but the notebooks the notebooks came before he went to England and the lost notebook, typically most of it came after he came back from him. So uh, so that is the work which was not uh, sort of available so so much. So that work is actually perhaps more, uh, you know, there's a lot more to discover there than in the published papers. And uh, what we want to do is we want to explain uh, the identities uh, and theorems, and if possible, uh, find uh, discovery approaches, how someone can discover, can discover such identities. Um, so the hope is to, you know, we don't know how Ramanujan thought, but the hope is to somehow get into that. Um, we want to focus on techniques which you can potentially use. So for example, the Euler's uh, approach to factorizing thing is a technique which, which has been very general and we'll extend it and Ramanujan knew it. We'll give an algorithm which you can use yourself to uh, experience, uh, experiment with many series. So focus on techniques that work on many contexts, in many contexts. Uh, so in that way, it may be useful in your own work and uh, give background where needed. So here I'm more guided towards uh, saying that it should be accessible to an undergrad, uh, at an undergrad, uh, somebody who's studying undergrad. And... Uh, Definitely for a graduate, graduate student. So uh, the target is to, to you know, 
to do things so that you can uh, actually work in this area. So you get the basic things. I will give notes uh, and I will give exercises. Uh, to learn so that you can learn the techniques. Um, and uh, and gain familiarity. So if they show up in your own work, uh, that will be good. And uh, uh, all these will be placed on the website. Uh, you're free to write emails to me uh, to make uh, suggestions or to suggest that if there are not too many people, then we can always figure out a way to uh, check the exercise results. All right, so I just want to close now. Um, bye. Showing you the identities again. And uh, this particular talk was based on an article in Resonance, and uh, it's available online and on my site. Uh, so this is the, uh, it's, it's on archive too, and it's available uh, as a link. It's a published article in Resonance. It's a very good uh, magazine. And uh, I want to close by uh, mentioning this comment by uh, Hardy about Ramanujan, that he worked far more than a majority of modern mathematicians by induction from numerical examples. So this is some takeaway that we, we will find repeatedly coming in in these lectures. Okay, so thank you very much and for coming and please uh, now you can ask any questions. Please don't hesitate. Any questions? Okay, then let me... Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, thank you for the nice talk. I just wanted to ask these uh, handwritten lecture uh, notes will be on the web page, right? Yeah, I can provide them, but I, I don't know if you'll be able to read the read my handwriting. I mean, my students all complain about my handwriting mm -hmm. all the time, but I will make them available for sure. Thank you, sir.